What's up, guys? I'm your friend Joseph Craven. This is Super Squad D, where today the D stands for a trip down memory lane. Now I know what you're thinking. You come here to watch Tyler ramble about the 7,000 new figures he has purchased and hasn't even taken out of the box yet. I get it, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I guess the D stands for the disappointment that you feel seeing me here on this video instead of Tyler, my bad. Well, let me, let me just explain real quick why I'm here, why this is going on right now. You may have watched a video we posted a few weeks back of us going through Target in sort of a vlog video and just kind of goofing off, doing whatever. And in that video, we discovered they had in stock for once some Boba Fett Star Wars Black Series action figures. And I haven't purchased figures in a while. I hadn't purchased any Star Wars Black Series figures. But on a whim, I bought that one because I've always loved Boba Fett and Mandalorians and the lore around Mandalorians. And that was a mistake. And I realize that now, that I have purchased several more figures in a very short amount of time. My Mandalorian army over here is always watching over me as I uh, do work on the computer, including Django, who's flying above the secondary monitor. Basically, it started the obsession all over again. The obsession that I had when I was a child. And because of that, I ended up going to my parents' house and gathering up a bunch of stuff that I had not seen, played with, whatever, since I was a kid, and especially since I moved out of my parents' house in 2005. So I'm taking over Toy Tuesday to go through some of my childhood toys that I have recently reacquired and have not looked at, held in my hand in bare minimum since 2005, probably earlier than that, because that's when I finished high school. And I don't think I was still playing with my toys in high school, but there's a solid chance I still was. I didn't really have a whole lot going on back then. I was friends with Tyler. I mean, come on, it's not like my life could have gotten any, any worse. <laughs> When I brought this home, I just feel like I have to show you my wife's genuine reaction. Did you save your entire childhood? So this one's exciting. This is my Star Wars box I'm gonna open up. Like I said, haven't touched this stuff, haven't seen this stuff in so long. I'm gonna see how much of this stuff I really remember. So what do I remember? What do I still have? What has survived living in storage for so many years? This is it's gonna be dumb and it's gonna be fun. I might as well start it off with the one thing I have actually had over here. Um, at my house since I got married is the uh, the Millennium Falcon. So of course in the 90s the Star Wars toys came kind of came back in like a reissue updated thing. I believe the the series was called Power of the Force. And and this was before the prequels have been made. So really this would have if it co coincided with anything this would have coincided with the the Star Wars Special Edition releases on VHS. Off the top of my head, I don't remember if Power of the Force had to do with the Special Edition release or if it just was because it was growing in popularity or if it's just they wanted to tap into nostalgia to build up to uh, the, the future prequels that were coming out. But Power of the Force stuff came out. And here's the Millennium Falcon ship slash playset. It's got three legs. This one folds up. These two in the back kind of fit up in there. They're a little stiff because they're old. It does have a... Uh, turret gun. I'm not sure where the gun is. There's a chance it's in this box I'm about to crack open. We'll find out. It opens up. On the inside, you've got a removable smuggler's pan floor panel so you can hide things or people under the floor. You've got your hollow chest table there and the uh, the actual door that has a couple of uh, has a couple of legs that go into it. They're probably in this box. Oh, and then the cockpit. And the cockpit has some like see-through transparent plastic glass that goes up in here. But it's always been a little bit finicky. Even when this thing was brand new, it never really quite fit like super well. Um, I'm not really sure what they expected it to, to do. So I just kind of, I've just had to live with that <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> this is why we're here. This is why I'm making the video. This is what we're gonna dig into because this has Probably most, if not all, but probably at the very least most of the figures, ships, accessories, everything. I don't know, let's just crack it open. I have not dug through this in at least 16 years. Oh, it's good right off the bat. I mean, I'm starting things off with pieces of Dash Rindar's <laughs> modified Corellian 
freighter. So this is supposed to be a, uh, made by the same people that made the Millennium Falcon. Um, if I remember correctly, oh, what was it called? The Outrider, I believe. Someone can, again, I'm trying to go strictly off of memory here. So someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but from Shadows of the Empire, the character Dash Rendar, I believe this was the Outrider. So the cockpit is somewhere in here. Let's see if I can find it. It is one thing about the 90s is like all this stuff like came apart. So the cockpit goes here and it was supposed to come apart maybe as an escape pod. I don't know if it was really supposed to or if they just made it easy. And it's got a turret goes here, a turret goes here, and another gun goes here. Clearly all of those have been removed. I'll find them in this box. But the whole point of this is that the ship opens up and rotates like that. And then it's like in attack mode. I'm sure as I empty out the box, I'll find more pieces of that. So we'll get to that in a minute. But right under that is this A-Wing that actually has the pilot just hanging out in it. Oh yeah, that's right. So this slot pops open, pops open like that. And here's the first 1990s Power of the Four Star Wars figure we get to look at here, an A-Wing pilot holding, looks like a Han Solo. Um, uh, what was the make of this blaster? It's like a DL-44 or something like that. I'm, <laughs> I might be getting the blaster confused with like a golden eye gun and uh i don't think he came with that gun i believe that is just the han solo i, I want to say it's a dl44 someone correct me if i'm wrong but uh apparently i just fitted him with it as he flew through on his a-wing so here's the a-wing toy wow okay so let me see what i remember about the a-wing so obviously it's got the cockpit that you pop open it's got a button here for the landing gear as well Oh, that needed a little bit of encouragement, but there's the A-Wing landing gear and the blasters can pop out and rotate so you can fire up and down, I guess. But this, I feel like, was not one that made sound, but maybe it was because it does look like it has a compartment right here. Let's see if we can pop it open. In. It doesn't really open all the way and there's nothing in it. So I guess this was just like a storage cargo compartment or something. So there's the A-Wing. Looking pretty cool. <laughs> now this is fun. This is fun. Cause this actually shifts gears. We've seen now an extended universe in Shadows of the Empire. We've seen a traditional ship in the A-Wing. Let's jump into the prequels with Sebulba's Pod Racer. And this one, cause Sebulba was a trickster, has doors. One of the doors is currently missing. And it has a little button here in the middle that pops out attack blades that are supposed to rotate. And this is the best they've ever rotated, by the way. This is not showing its age. This is legitimately <laughs> just as good as it ever got with this. But the Potters are toys. I only ever had Sebulba's. I did not get Anakin's Potters. Oh yeah, he's supposed to have a beam of energy between the two. I'm sure that thing has been entirely destroyed over the years. But the pod race toys, I didn't ever get Anakin's pod racer, I don't believe. I think I only ever had Sebulba's. Ooh, hold on. Now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay, there, there. Now Sebulba's pod racer is together, except for the energy bolt. I feel like my energy bolt's broken. I hate to say it. Sorry, Sebulba. But the, the pod racer toys had the handle there so that you could fly them around, which I did a lot of. Like I said, I played with toys. I played with toys for until I was an older age and I really should have been playing with toys, if I'm honest with you. All right, I pulled out Sebulba's pod racer and this guy popped out. Who is this guy? Oh, I know who this guy is. This guy's a swoop pilot. Also Shadows of the Empire. Um, the swoops were the, uh, the modified speeder bikes. Just somebody I think you fought in Shadows of the Empire. Must mean there's a swoop in this box. I'm excited to find it. Hey, let's just, just get into the important stuff. The guy that kind of started all this for me. Here's the Boba Fett slave one. Showing its age a little bit, which is cool. Got a few figures up in here. Looks like a <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin. I'm currently getting towards the end of Clone Wars where they've expounded on Tarkin's character a bit. And what a jerk. Here's a Boba Fett sitting inside of the Slave One. And so the Slave One toy had a cargo door that slides in here. It has the loading door right there, but it had this knob that lowered the pilot down. And in this case, the pilot is another Boba Fett. So I had two Boba Fett figures. Let's see if there's anything different between the two of them. Yeah, a little bit different paint scheme. That's what's the what the difference is. If you look on the these arms, there are left arms, green bracer, kind of a reddish maroonish bracer, and then the jetpacks also. Slightly different paint. 
same character sculpt, it looks like. The Boba Fett Slave One ship didn't have any other like features. It had the turrets that rotated around, but it didn't have anything else in the, both the Boba, man, the Boba and the prequel Jango Fett Slave One. What they did have was the wings automatically tilted, or at least on this one it did. The wings automatically tilted, they both have handles, again, for flying, and it also was a little button here that if you wanted to, you held the button, the trigger that's up in the handle. You held it, and it kept the wings in a vertical position, as opposed to sliding down to the horizontal position. And if you look on the inside, I mean, it really is, I don't know if you can, it really is as simple as, you can see it, just that little lever is what holds it in place when you squeeze it. Something was wedged up in there blocking it. It was just a blaster rifle. But next to that slave one, I did have right here, the prequel Django Fett slave one. It's a little bit sturdier model. This is because it did not have an opening cargo bay. So if you wanted to load a pilot Django Fett figure into it, you had to open that up right there, and then you could put a Django Fett up there in front, and then it had space in the back for a couple other figures to fit in behind there. Two wings as well. Here's one of them. These wings tilt down. They're supposed to be connected to each other so you can tilt them. They don't tip down automatically. What this did have was, okay, so on the back it's got a knob and some and a button. And this button drops a bomb <laughs> that you then instantly lose. The knob, you push it in, and look at that. It's got little missiles. I believe you twist it and the missiles fire. Yep, there they go. Man, this is sweet. They did a really good job of modifying the Boba Fett Slave One design when they did the prequel toys to make the Jango Fett Slave One design. But, so they replaced the, the flimsy interior um, cargo hold with the weaponry that you could then fire. There we go, found the cargo door. So there's the Boba Fett and the Jango Fett together. The comparison between the two of them. You can't obviously tell how light this is, but this thing is so much lighter because it's hollow on the inside. And the Jango Fett one just seems like it's a little bit sturdier. I mean, both of them so cool. Slave One was such a cool and unique ship design. Whenever I was a kid and I was playing with the toys and coming up with my own stories for what was going on, whichever character was the protagonist, they flew Slave One because Slave One was the coolest ship. Don't at me. I need to get some stands that hold this thing up. Just like attach it right here, put it up on that shelf. If you know of any good ones, shout me out in the comments what I could use to mount this Slave One up on my chest, chest, no? Nope, those are shelves. It's not a chest of drawers at all. I've gotten drunk off Star Wars figures, my bad. Oh, a tiny Jango Fett pistol fell out. Quick figure break, take a break from the uh, from the ships. Here's a little droid Is that what they call them? This thing folds up, flexible middle spine. You roll up the legs and it's, you know, in the movies and the cartoons and all, they roll at that point. I don't think this figure was ever made for rolling, but this is a pretty cool, well-designed destroyer droid. It's a little bit warped from storage. Its arms are kind of facing the wrong way, so he's got to kind of tilt his spine now, but you know, I'll work on maybe trying to gently, gently bend those back into shape. That's a cool one. Let's see who else we got here. Here's another one that's missing a head. So I had two destroyer droids. I guess the head is sitting in there somewhere. Here is... <laughs> Darth Vader, who's also missing a head. <laughs> Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader looks like. His head looks so small without his, his whole mask on there. This is an interesting figure that actually has, um, this arm is does not bend at the elbow. This arm does, and the hand itself, so it bends at both the elbow and the wrist. Most of these old figures did not have that much articulation. Most of them, they only did like that, and then their arms, and that's all. Like if we look back on this Grand Moff Tarkin, arms, up and down, torso, left and right, legs up and down, and that's it. Here's Qui-Gon, Liam Neeson. I can't do a Liam Neeson impression. I can try, I can't do it though, but it's, cause he's, he's very, he's deep and he's very gravelly. And I, I just can't do it very, I can't do it very well. Attican, you know, I just can't. Here's the swoop from earlier that the swoop pilot rides. So he just hops in there. 
puts his arms over the bars and keep that head up, buddy, so you know you're going. I think this must be a spring-loaded weapon because that's what all 90s toys had. It says out the swoop guy, obviously, I must have a speeder bike, so he's your speeder bike pilot. He's a funny one because his legs go really far out and his head goes up, so he looks like he's about to do like a form tackling drill. Weapon for the Outrider. Slap down on there. Speaking of which, here he is. Dash Rendar himself, straight from Shadows of the Empire. I mean, his torso got real wiggly on me. He's a guy, maybe I need to track down a, a, another version of him. Back to the ships real quick. My poor Naboo Starfighter, a little bent out of shape. Oh, it's trying to make noise. It used to uh, light up here, the blasters would light up, and uh, it had two sound effects, blaster fire and uh, I believe like a just a flying sound effect, kind of a whooshing sound effect. There's a projectile somewhere that fits in there, another spring-loaded projectile, gotta love those. <laughs> a droid ship that has come entirely apart, it's supposed to be able to walk. Cockpit for the Outrider. Outrider, is that right? So something I had completely forgotten about until just now is that the droid fighters came on this little like platform thing. Slap, snap them into position. They'd fit in there. The other two had missiles that would fire. And you push these buttons in the middle one. One thing I am a little unsure of is why I felt the need to store so many of these things like taken apart. But I did. I found a Michael Keaton Batman from the Batman movies. Whoops, that wasn't supposed to be in there. What's Michael Keaton doing in space? Ah, uh, the twin ion engine TIE fighter. There it is. Open that thing up. Oh, little data platform. It's what the uh, the prequel movies came with. These little data things and they had a little uh, toy you could put them on and it'd make sounds from the movies. But I never had that part, I just had the data cards. TIE fighter had little buttons here that would once again spring load it fire off the wing, oh no, I'm crashing, and then crash. These toys were made to be played with. These were not as highly detailed as the, the stuff we get now, but they were made to not sit on a shelf, which is pretty cool. They're made to be interactive, made to be you to be doing stuff with. Like this is stuff for kids to play with. And then as the kids got older, we swap over to buying the highly detailed Boba Fetts that we pose. It's funny how that goes. All right, finally found the cockpit of the Outrider. So now it's actually all together. Ta-da! There it is. There's the Shadows of the Empire Dash Rendar's Outrider. It is a little bit smaller of a Corellian modified Corellian freighter than the Millennium Falcon is. Just a little bit smaller. That is most of the ships and stuff. That's pretty much all the ships. It's barely any of the figures. I didn't really scratch the surface on all the figures because the figures themselves aren't always anything to really be amazed by, you know? They, they don't compare to the figures of these days. They're still pretty cool though. Like for example, here's a, uh, here's a cool Django Fett. Does he have a helmet that comes off? He does have a helmet that comes off. And fairly articulated arms. He can move his elbows in and out, so he's gonna gun someone down. He's kinda got a beard going. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a cool Django. I like that. I also found another Django that um, obviously is the uh, battle with Mace Windu Django Fett, cause he ain't got a head. So uh, there's a head somewhere in that box that fits on this Django Fett. Cool figure, Django Fett. Cool character. Obviously got a love for Mandalorians. But then you got the ones that really started it all, you know? You've got old Obi-Wan. It's a name I've not heard in some time. You got Han, who actually kind of looks a little bit like Harrison Ford. And then you've got the, the Tatooine farm boy, Luke Skywalker, that really started it all. Really ripped, he's been hitting. He's been working out. He's really, he's well built Luke Skywalker here. He's got, putting Han to shame. I remember this, I remember that he was weirdly ripped. I remember he's in his farm boy outfit and he kind of is standing like this. But man, I'd forgotten so much about everything that goes into all this. I mean, it's cool to relive all this. Really sitting above that windshield there, Luke. So we have several other boxes with some other stuff. The bunch of figures that I might, you know, put up, put some pictures of, put in a different video, something like that. Whatever you might want to see, you let me know. My favorite movie when I was a kid was Jurassic Park. So you bet there's a bunch of Jurassic Park stuff that I'm going to open up. That's going to be crazy fun to kind of reminisce about. But it's been really cool to look back on all of these things. Along with that, there's a couple of boxes that just kind of have an assortment of toys that have been kept over the years. So you let me know in the comments what it is you want to see next. Jurassic Park, hodgepodge of whatever's around, 
let me know and I'll get to it. There's also a bunch of Lego, because I was huge into Lego. I don't know how well that will uh, translate to some videos because it's all in pieces. But hey, if you want to look at Lego, I will gladly look at Lego with you. But I've had fun looking through all this stuff. Hopefully you have too. Let me know what you want to see next. Tell me about what your favorite childhood toys were. And I'll leave you with this fun little thing real quick. This right here is a speeder bike that my oldest brother had. One of the few toys he owned. This is the only, I think, original trilogy, original toy that I have in my collection. But this is his speeder bike from 1983 when Return of the Jedi came out. Still got it. Still barely holding together. But just like everything else that's good and fun to play with, it's spring-loaded and ready to fall apart on a moment's notice. Thanks for watching this episode of Toy Tuesday on Super Squad D. Tune in again next week. We'll go through a little bit more of this vintage stuff to see what still survives. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a bunch of old figures to play with, so see ya.